So Michael Smith, our eminent Victoria columnist, uh, joins us today. And uh, when he wants to come to the center of the universe here in Vancouver, he's got to take the ferry. And of course, he gets pretty excited about any news on the ferry front. So can you tell us about this Horseshoe Bay flip-flop thing? What happened? Okay, and last week you'll recall that Todd Stone, uh, the transportation minister, threw everyone for a loop over here when he said that the government might shut down the Departure Bay Ferry Terminal near Nanaimo and shut down the ferry route between Nanaimo and Horseshoe Bay in West Van. And what he said was they would reroute all that traffic down through Tawasin. Now, People went absolutely ballistic over this idea. And I and remember that day, oh man, people went crazy. Because I spoke to some people up island who uh, rely on that ferry service. And I said, are you guys angry up there? And one guy said to me, Ian, said, you know, we're not really that angry. What we're, what we're more is awestruck at the stupidity <laughs> of, of this idea. Because when you take a look at the numbers, they have more than a million vehicles and three million passengers a year on that ferry route. And this guy was talking about taking all those people and putting them through this commuter meat grinder down through Tawasin, which is, is already clogged as a commuter route. Yeah, we, so have, we have weights. Absolutely insane. We have weights in Victoria on the Swartz Bay run as it is. So you're going to add another million vehicles a year? I mean, it was it, it, astonishing that this was actually being considered, he had, you know, the, the guy would come out and say, we're thinking of doing this. Now, as you know, and as a lot of the province readers likely already know, that, that lasted 24 hours because yeah. the next day he came Quickest out and said, oh, around no, in uh, political history, I think. We're not going to do it. It was the old flip-flop. He folded faster than Superman on laundry day, as, <laughs> as I said in a column once, <laughs> one time, years ago. So he came out the next day and said, that's it, we're, we're not going to do it. But... It, talk about bizarre it just makes you wonder you know who's who's driving the ship over there crazy but isn't there sometimes you you have a little smoke here and you cover up what you're really intending to do oh oh you smell a rat i smell a rat okay because <laughs> because yeah a lot of readers pointed this out to me as well because they said you know what this is not necessarily just incompetence or temporary insanity by this guy there could be some method to his madness because it's one of the oldest tricks in the book, the old bait and switch. Because what you do is you put out an idea that the public is absolutely going to hate and go crazy over. And they know that. They're not stupid. They know the public is going to go ballistic and, and, and angry over this. So what they do is they put that out. The public gets angry. Then they say, oh, never mind. They take that off the table, pat themselves in the back for doing the right thing. And then they say, well, now... Well, looks like we're going to have to raise fares because <laughs> this is what the president of BC Ferries, Mike Corrigan, came out and said, well, if you're not going to shut down that ferry terminal to save money, it looks like we're going to have to raise fares now. So it's the old sort of bait and switch and, uh, you know, a little shell game they play. So we should be we should be happy then because they saved Horseshoe Bay. So how could we be upset that fares well, are raised? If they didn't go. suggest it and they raised fares, people would be going Oh my God, but instead they're saying, well, they saved Horseshoe Bay Terminal here, so we're okay with the, is, raising the fares. This is the talking point on it. It's like, okay, you can, you can keep your stinking ferry terminal, but you're going to have to pay more for it. Now, however, I will say that Premier Christy Clark did come out a couple of days ago and say, well, we're, we don't want to raise the fares either because we think the fares are too high. And um, now I would point out, though, that next year in 2015 there is an there is already a scheduled four percent fare increase that's set to kick in next year more than double the rate of inflation so it'd be nice to see if premier christy clark could come out and clarify that today would be nice uh and say is she saying that that fare increase is not going to happen next year because it's scheduled to kick in in 2015 another hike well can she play it both ways she says that we're not intending to raise fares we don't want to raise fares but those horrible bc ferries people are raising them despite our objections Pro she'll probably say that <laughs> we're just guessing here that might be a way to talk about it so tell me about this bc ferries because they every time we talk about raising fares some new expose on you know 
middle management, the biggest horror story in BC, middle management, BC Ferries, how many people report to how many people? Explain that ratio of managers to workers. Okay, here's the thing. A lot of people are saying, look, it seems like the only bright idea that ever comes out of BC Ferries is cut service or raise fares. And a lot of people are contacting me and say, hey, why don't you guys maybe try to control your own costs? For example, as you just mentioned, middle managers. Now, here's the deal on that, Ian. There's 4,400 employees at BC Ferries. Out of that, they have 475 managers, which is roughly about eight to one. Now, if you talk to the eight, in other words, eight employees for every manager, that's a lot of managers. Uh, you talk to the president of the union over there, he was now, of course, he has a stake in knocking management, but still, I think he raises a good point compared to the Washington State ferry system where he says the ratio is 40 to 1. 40 to 1. That's what he says, 40 to 1. Five now, he's times got as many managers. Too. The government disputes that. They will say, oh, he's counting some people as managers who aren't really managers. But look, an 8 to 1 ratio in management, that's a lot of managers. You know, they're breeding like rabbits over there. I don't know who they're managing. Maybe they're managing each other. So, so you've got two bands of rabbits there. You've got the UVic rabbits, and you've also got the BC Ferry rabbits. The BC Ferry management rabbits. They're, the, the numbers are exploding. <laughs> They're rabbiting around, creating new new managers all the time. Well, that's what it seems like, because <laughs> I'll tell you what. I got a ton of emails from people who work at BC Ferries now, who worked at BC Ferries in the past, saying, you are darn right there's more managers. I had one guy email me uh, yesterday, and he said, I used to be a, an engineer at BC Ferries. I used to have one boss. By the time I retired there, I had like six bosses. Nice. You know, the number of managers. So instead of, so the bot, look, the point is, instead of sticking it to people with fare increases all the time, why don't you guys get your own costs under control and eliminate some of the management bloat that you have there? Right. Now, I know the NHL is floating uh, advertising on their uh, sweaters. Uh, BC Ferries, they've got a lot of uh, space there on the side. Don't you think a Nike swoosh would look excellent right on the side of a BC Ferries? This, this trip brought point. to you by Nike. Hey, this is another point I bring up in my column, and I, people, I encourage people to check it out on theprovince.com. Another way they can possibly raise money. When you go on a bus, have you ever noticed on, on a bus they got ads and advertising plastered all over the outside uh, of a bus? Why don't they sell more advertising at BC Ferries? You've got a captive audience that have got to sit around in those terminals and on the boats for hours at a time. Why don't they put more advertising on those buses and raise money that way? I thought that was an interesting suggestion. I asked BC Ferries the other day, how much do you guys raise from advertising per year? They said that that number was not available. They referred me to BC Ferries annual general report. I looked at the annual general report. It had not a single line item in there in their financial numbers about any kind of advertising revenue. Obviously, they do sell some ads, but it appears that they're not maximizing that kind of revenue. You know, why don't these guys hire some uh, ad salespeople, put them on commission, go out, sell some ads, and put up more advertising around BC Ferries and the infrastructure around the ferries and raise some money that way. You know, because here's the thing, Ian. The guy, the president of BC Ferries, Mike Corrigan, makes half a million bucks a year. He just got another big performance bonus. Look, why don't you guys put on your thinking cap and try to think of some other ways to reduce your costs and to raise revenue without cutting service and sticking it to the public every single time with fare hikes. That's all I'm saying. Mike, always great to hear from you in Victoria for your perspective. I uh, hope you enjoy your next ferry ride. All right. All right, Ian. It's always my pleasure. Talk to you next time. Okay. See ya.